How you doing? Let's pray. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Lord, we honor you. We honor your presence. We honor your word. We ask you to fill this place. We ask you to speak to us, to guide us. We want to hear from you. I ask for you to remove all blockades and all inhibitions to your word. Let your word have free course and change us and guide us. Let us see our errors and be blessed. Wash us in your blood. And uh, we thank you that you are a shield for us, our glory and the lift of our heads. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. And uh, why don't you put your hands together again for the Greater Love Gospel Choir. Okay. Were they not wonderful today? Yeah. Well done, well done. Greater Love Gospel Choir. We were blessed. Amen. Um, I bring you greetings from Tumu. Tumu. And um, Tumu. So, uh, some people pronounce it differently, but um, because I'm Swiss, I, I, I pronounce it Tumu. Amen. And um, Prophet sends his love. I believe they're in Laura. Actually, they're in Laura now. And uh, Laura is not, it's not a name of a person, it's a name of a place. And um, uh, God is doing wonderful things. And you can catch all the crusades live on YouTube and on Dark Heward Mills. YouTube page, I believe. Amen. And I know that your life will never be the same again. So um, this week is Founders Week. So actually, this is technically our Founders Sunday. There's, there's some highs in the mic. There's some highs in the mic. And next week, Sunday, Prophet is back. So we'll have our proper birthday celebration next week, Sunday. Um, and so I'm just... I'm just filling in this morning, um, and because it's Founders Week, I just want to share with you something in line with that. Um, we are celebrating the gift of our pastor, our prophet, our leader, and the person that God gave us. Amen. And um, I'm just going to share from very, very short today, uh, because we have a lot of activities after church. Amen. And so I'm going to be sharing for a short time. Will I have your attention for the next few minutes? Amen. And um, I think all over the world, all over the world, um, the church of God is, unfortunately, um, the notion of God using a man to bless you is becoming more and more criticized and more and more opposed. Amen. Amen. But that's what happens when we move slowly away from the Bible and we move slowly towards our own ideas. Amen. And um, I want to share with you from the sweet influences of the Holy Spirit. Um, there's a chapter on the sweet influence of the Holy Spirit on your knowledge of God. Amen. And how the Holy Spirit helps you to know God. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot easily know God. Because God is great and God is wonderful. The Bible says the earth is his footstool. You know what a footstool is? Do you know the stool you sit on to pound fufu? Okay. Uh, it's supposed to be a footstool, but we have made it a seat. Amen. So now, what the Bible says is that the whole earth from... Uh, from from Solomon Islands to California. That's as far east and west as I can think. And then from the Arctic to Antarctica, the whole world is like his footstool. That's where he puts his foot. So now how much more Ghana? Like what is Ghana? Now how much more Accra? Now, how much more Tessano? Now, how much more your house at Tessano? 
And now, how much more your room in your house in Tesano, in Accra, in Ghana, in the footstool? And then how much more you in your room? And then you say you want to, be, you want to know God. So the Lord sends the Holy Spirit to help us to, to bridge the gap between us and God. And so in 1 Corinthians 2, the Bible says, um, The things of a man knoweth no man, save the spirit of the man himself. There are things about you no one knows. As you are sitting here, you, as you are sitting here, <laughs> there are things, the things of a man, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. See, when a fish is in water, you cannot tell if he's crying or he's sweating. Only the fish can tell you that. As you see me, how many of you like, people have told you, oh, wow, how are you? They're hugging you and you're saying, hey, <laughs> you don't know. How many of you have been before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know. You, you don't know. You don't know. How many of you have felt like saying, you don't understand? You, you don't understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The things of a man knoweth no man, save the spirit of that. You know, when somebody has a problem, one of the worst things you can do is try to explain the problem to the person. It's like when somebody dies, everybody has a revelation that they are sharing. He was too nice for earth, so God wanted to be with him. So God took him. Something was about to happen. And God saved him. So God has taken him. Uh, he is, he is, he's dear to God. <laughs> he's dear to God's heart. So God has taken him. And the people say it's a curse. That's why he has died. Some people say his time was up. So he, these were the years that God gave him. So. Now, if you have ever really been somebody who has lost somebody, you don't appreciate any of these revelations. When they start, it's like, you, you see, you don't, you don't understand. You are just telling theories. And that's why the scripture says, miserable comforters are ye. Because you can never, under, in fact, the best way to understand somebody's problem is to understand that I don't understand. As, as the archbishop always says, you have to understand that you don't understand. Yes. Recently, I was talking to him, and he said, the older I get, <laughs> the more I understand that I don't understand what I thought I understood. You see, oh, you say the first two, but it's added the third one. What I, I have under, come to understand, I don't understand what I thought I understood. Yes. So, you may not know what it's like I've almost finished preaching, don't worry. I'm talking a lot because I don't have anything to say. So, you, may, you can't. Now, I was with, I had, I was, I had dinner with a man of God recently. A great man of God. Very recently, a few weeks ago. And as we were eating, he said that, he was telling me that I'm, I'm blessed to be able to be pastoring a church and my father is still around because <laughs> when people write their books about their life, their ministry, they only write the good things. That they, they, they don't really write. Then he asked me, have I ever seen, um, have I ever seen a pastor write that I have a very bad marriage? Like I have a very bad marriage in the book. Like chapter, my bad marriage. Yes. They ask me, do I think that there's no, there's no, there's no pastor who is struggling in this marriage? And he was explaining to me that you are blessed if you get someone who is there because the book will only tell you what you should do. But it doesn't usually tell you what you should avoid. And it doesn't confess the mistake that I, this thing I did, I shouldn't have done. I made a mistake. Very rarely will you ever find something like that. I don't know if you have me. And one day I was in a car with another great man of God. Very great man of God. In a car somewhere, not in Ghana, I was in another place. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, occasionally, I'm, I'm not only a local, once in a while I was 
And I, I just remember, thank you, Holy Spirit. He told me, do you think I'm the only one with marital problems in, in the, he mentioned his country, in my country? He said, we are plenty, only that mine has come out. <laughs> he said, that only that mine has come out for you to see mine. Then he mentioned... This has come out. Anyway, don't worry, it's okay, it's part of. Mine has come out. Are you with me? So, then he mentioned a, another great man of God that I know. Then he said, That guy is a Baptist. I know if I say his name, you all know. That guy is a great man of God. Said the wife that he had, I say he's a Baptist because it's almost like it's. Prophets and charismatics and so on who have said that the Baptist, the Baptist, he's struggling. But what I'm trying to say is that you will not know the things that are what people think. Have you, you, how many of you have told somebody, they asked you, are, is there a problem between me? And you say, oh, nothing, but there was a problem. How many of you, is happened before? Yes, yes. Is there any issue? I just wanted to, oh, at all. Huh. So, so you don't really know the person. No one knows the person like the person's spirit. My own spirit, I know myself. Now, the scripture is saying, what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of a man. Even so, in the same way, nobody knows God really like the spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you are with me. Then it says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered into the hearts of men. The things which God has prepared for those who love him. Then in verse 10 it says, But God has revealed these things, the things of God to us, by his Holy Spirit. Can I have an amen? So the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us to know God. Now, how does the Holy Spirit help you to know God? I would recommend to you chapter 3 of the book, Sweet Influences of the Holy Spirit. They say if you want to hide something from a black man, you should put it into a book. And I can, I can confirm it after being, uh, after being around for a while. I can confirm that it is true. But if you, if you look at this book, put it up, put it up. The Sweet Influence of the Anointing. Chapter 3 is my favorite chapter. It's a chapter on how the Holy Spirit will influence you to know God. And in that chapter, Prophet gives us six works of the Holy Spirit that help you to know God. Six of them which we don't have time for. So I'm going to select one because it's found this Sunday. So I'm selecting one. And that is the Holy Spirit will, when he wants you to know him, he will send to you Holy Spirit-led ministers of God when he wants you to know him. He will, it's number five, in case you are looking for it. And it's one of the best points. The Holy Spirit will send to you. Like if God wants to know you, it's quite mysterious. He will not explain himself to you by himself. He will send somebody to you to help their relationship it's like marriage counseling when there is a problem between two people ah even as i'm saying i remember the counseling i have to do after church when there's a problem between two people i saw somebody and reminded me of a problem yeah you know how it is when there's a problem how many of you how many people are married here married or have been have been so, so okay uh-huh now okay how many of you are married or have been in a relationship or are in a relationship or are in a pipeline or something. Uh -huh. Have you seen that sometimes there's a problem and somebody else has to get in between you to fix it? Now that's what happens with the Holy Spirit and us. He sends people to fix. Now look at Jeremiah 3, 14. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14. It says, 10, O backsliding children, for I am married to you. I'm what? Oh, help me, help me. I'm almost finished preaching. If you stay with me. I'm what? I'm married to you. So he was saying that, like, we have gone away from God. We've backslidden from God. And he's, God is trying to say, like, come back so that we fix the marriage. Now, put up my scripture. How is God going to fix the relationship? Look at the next verse, verse 15. And I will give you pastors. I will give you pastors to work on the relationship. I'll give you pastors to help you to fix your relationship with me. I'll give you pastors. So in this church, God has given us a man. His name is Doug Heward Mills. He's a, he's a pastor in Accra. 
he's, he's, he's a pastor. He, he works in Accra. And he is the marriage counselor of our marriage with God. See, some of you didn't used to read your Bible. Then God sent a Holy Spirit-led minister of God. And he came to teach you something called quiet time. And since then, how many of you heard what, uh, the word quiet time, you heard it in this church? Raise your hand. So since then, you see, your relationship with God is a little better, even if it's five times a year. It used to be zero. So since the Holy Spirit-led man of God came, your relationship with God has changed. Are you there? Going home? I'm almost done. Oh, I, I promise I've almost finished preaching. Now, Ephesians 4.11 says that, and he gave some, this is the Holy Spirit at work again. He gave some apostles. Then he gave some prophets. Then he gave some evangelists. Then he gave some pastors. Then he also gave some people teachers. What was this for? Yes, it was for the perfecting of the saints. Yes, it was for the work of the ministry. Yes, it was for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now there's a colon. We usually end here. But it goes on to say, till we all come to the unity of the faith and to what? Underline it there. The knowledge, you see, when he wants you to know him. Oh, I don't, I don't know if I'm preaching the wrong church. When he wants you to know him, he will send, he will send to you Holy Spirit led, it's, it's a thing that exists in the world. Holy Spirit, like people who are led by the Holy Spirit, he will send, if God wants you to know him, he will not appear to you himself. No, 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 no. That, that's, you see, even to hear the voice of God, it takes maturity. To hear, everybody say, God, God spoke to me, God spoke to me, God spoke to me. A lot of those relationships end in breakup. God spoke to me, God spoke to me. <laughs> I have peace. <laughs> You guys behave yourself. So when God wants to speak to you, wants you to know him. Now, let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 3. I'm almost done. I'm just reading verses today, then we close. 1 Samuel chapter 3. The child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. Okay? Are you with me? Now, Samuel is a small boy, but he's working in church. You are a girl. Anyway. It's Founders Sunday. And he ministered to God before Eli. Now you think you can just minister to God, but you need to actually do it before Eli. Everybody wants to take a man out of the equation of knowing God. It's, you, are, you are new. You know, actually, I question your, your desire to find God. Because the Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Earth, soil. Now, the only other treasure I know that's in earthen vessels is gold. Or maybe diamonds. And to, to, have you ever seen a miner coming out from under? He looks dirty, brown, sweaty. Because to get to the treasure, you have to deal with the soil. So when people go five meters in and they say, I can't take this soil. I actually question your determination to make it to the treasure. Yeah, I, I question your love for God. Because in trying to find God, you have to deal with the earthen vessel. The earthen vessel, I'm telling you. Do you know how I know? At first, I'll tell you the theory. But now I know because I'm a pastor, I can confirm I'm F. I can confirm. Now I know for sure because I'm also a pastor. I can tell you that we are soil. Men are really dust. We are really, there's nothing. That's why 2 Corinthians 4 7 says, we have the church and earthen vessel so that the excellency or the beauty or the, the greatness, the greatness of our pastor, Bishop Dagger, knows it's not his medical degree or his nationality or his height or he, even his own wisdom. It's the supernatural treasure that God placed inside of him many, many years ago. That is what the, that's what's excellent about the person. It's, it's the God part of the person. Everything else is just normal. But if you are not willing to deal, it's like if you want to drink Coke. You have to kiss the bottle. You have to kiss. You have to lick. You have to lick the bottle. Have you ever taken somebody's Coke by mistake and then you drank it? And then you realize that you've made a mistake. <laughs> but the person was there, so you didn't know how to express yourself that you've made a mistake. So you just say, eyes. Oh. I'm sorry. Because what you are saying is that I want the Coke, but I'm not willing to deal with the bottle. 
That's the problem. But if you really want to know God, if you really want to have a personal relationship with God, God will send you a man. So Samuel was ministering before God, to God before Eli. Psalm, 1 Samuel 3, 1, verse 2. It came to pass, when Eli was laid down in his place, his eyes began to wax dim, and he could not see. Verse 3. The lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Verse 4. The Lord called Samuel. God mentioned Samuel's name. Samuel! And Samuel said, oh, here am I. Now, who did Samuel run to? Why? Here I am. And, he, and Eli said, I didn't call you, lie down. Go and, and he went and lay down again. Now, when you, when you hear God's voice, you have to run to your pastor. I'm telling you. Why? Because you are not mature enough to know that God is speaking to you. You see, in the next verse, it says that Samuel thought that. God called again. Samuel went to Eli. And he answered, he said, so Samuel, now remember, Samuel was brought as a little child. As soon as he was weaned, which means as soon as he wasn't breastfeeding anymore, he was brought to the temple. And he grew up in the church. So the number one voice he knew was Eli's voice. Because that's the person who speaks every day in the church. So when he heard God's voice, why did he run to Eli? Because the truth is that God's voice sounds like the voice of your pastor. That's the sound that it sounds like. It's just true. That's what it sounds like. He knew. Look, my wife has tried to call me for and pretend to be somebody else. And they'll say, it doesn't work. If you hear the person's voice every day, you immediately know who is talking to you and who you are dealing with. So he knew he, what he could hear. This is Eli's voice. Now, why was... Samuel not able to hear God's voice. Seven. Samuel did not yet know the Lord. This is in the Bible. I'm just reading to you the Bible. Samuel didn't know God. When you don't, and neither was the word of God revealed to him. You cannot hear God's voice unless you know God. Unless God's voice is revealed to you, it takes maturity. So that's why Jesus said to Peter, he said, feed my lambs. Then he said, feed my sheep. Because the lambs are less matured Christians. Most of us are less matured Christians. That's why when we say, oh, choose a beloved. Pray for the will of God. Use peace, the empire. You see, you can't. That's what leads to all the breakups and the heartbreaks all over the church. People, we're always officiating breakups. All the time. I've officiated more breakups than weddings in this church. And when you try to advise, oh, I have peace. No, I was reading out of here, and then I did the three checks. The three checks. You, you see, you are not mature. You're, you're, you're not mature, and you are a lamb. Now, lambs cannot hear God's voice. That's why Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, not my lambs. The mature people, they know. And when Jesus was sending out the disciples, this, by the way, when Jesus sent out the disciples, he said, I send you as lambs amongst wolves, not sheep, lambs. So he had to give instructions. When you go, don't take any pests. When you go, carry this. If somebody doesn't receive you, do this. Whenever. Later on, when they were more mature, he said, go into other world and preach the gospel. Then they said, ah, but what, how we know what you say? I'll be with you. I'll be speaking to you. And now you are mature enough to actually hear my voice. Oh, yes. You are not. You. Okay, let me ask you. When you gave your life to Christ, who taught you how to read your Bible? Was it the Holy Spirit? Did the Holy Spirit appear to you and tell you, let's stop all these games, eh? Let's, when you gave your life to Christ, who brought you to the altar? The only person I know who gave his own life to Christ is my pastor, Bishop Richard. He said he read a pamphlet and then he realized that it's true and he knelt down and gave his life to Christ. <laughs> I've never heard, wow, I've never heard any story like that before. He read it and realized that it, it, this it makes sense. It's true. And he knelt down and did the prayer and gave his life to Christ. Wow. But the rest of us, my God, God had to send. That's why in the, in the song, Thanks for Richard, God sent his best man, you. That's say you go to hell. There's somebody here. And then we had to do last call, final call before you came. Today you say that. You worship your God at home. You know. That's why people don't ever get to know God. Holy Spirit led men of God. My, the, my journey to know God has been littered with great men of God. The Bible says that there was a man who was uh, paralyzed completely paralyzed and he needed to get to Jesus four men had to carry him 
There are four men in your life who will take you to God. I promise you, there are four. You are heavy. You are heavy. One person cannot carry you. Your problems. I tell you, Sister Ajoa had to bring you to church, and then you came. Then you stopped coming for three months. Then they forced you to join the choir. Then LP something in the choir also came to look for you. Then it still didn't work. Then you met Reverend something, and still you were not serious. You had some boyfriend who was flying you to Qatar every time. And then at a point, you found Reverend Jonathan. Reverend Jonathan sat you down. I told you, it takes four men. I'm telling you, four men. You are heavy. You are heavy. Say, I don't need a man. I don't need, I worship my God at home. It's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. Stop that. Who did your new believers go? You see, even the word Holy Spirit, where did you hear it? Where did you hear it? Were you not reading somebody's book? Did you not hear somebody preaching? Where did you hear that word Holy Spirit? Who laid hands on you? Say, as for me now, I have the gift. I have the gift. I find, you know, what, it, what strikes me is that more and more we are moving away from the Bible. More, that's what strikes me more and more. I'm moving away from the Bible. I will hear God's voice. God spoke to me. God spoke to me that I should leave the church. So you don't know God's voice. You know, when, when Jesus, you see, there's discernment of voices, okay, but there's also recognition of voices. They are different. When Jesus heard Peter say, you will not die, it was not discernment. Because he gave the reason. He said, Satan has just spoken. Because thou savest the things of this world. He knew what Satan likes and that God can never say this. He knew that God can never say this. He went to pray to God. And God told him that, no, the plan is still on. Go and die. So he knew that whatever you are saying, that can never be God. But you don't know that there are some things God cannot. God cannot tell you to insult your mother. I just felt in my spirit that God told me I should tell her my mind and leave home. You felt in your spirit. You are a lamb. You are a lamb. You are a little. You are a little lamb. You better get the podcast and start listening to and start to hear what God has to say to you through the Holy Spirit-led man of God that has been sent into your life. You are. You, you see. And as as we move more and more, I me, mean, I prefer to stand with the Bible. I prefer to go verse for verse. And you will never reach where you need to go in God until you meet a man. You can go through anyone that God has used, and you find out that without accepting the Holy Spirit-led man of God, you'll be walking in darkness for a long time. Now, anyway, I'm sorry. I'm not angry, I'm passionate. This is the Passion Translation. So, accept me. Now, let's look at this. Hosea, chapter 8. Hosea, chapter 8, verse 3. Hosea, chapter 8, verse 3. Israel has cast off the thing that is good. The thing that is good. And what will happen? The enemy will pursue him. He has thrown away what is good for him. Verse 4. What is the good thing? They have set up their own kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. You see, when, when I, I just want to talk about Christians and what we, who, we, who we see as great. And what we see as great. We make, you know, like when I, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but when I hear Christians saying like, I want to be like Elon Musk. I want to be like uh, Jeff Bezos. Um, I want to be like, I just wonder in myself whether it is a good thing. I am not criticizing. I'm sure they have very good principles. They are successful. God bless them. But I just wonder in my spirit that, who is great? You know, Psalm 16, verse 3, amplified version, if you can. Who is great to you? Like, who is wonderful to you? Also shows your relationship with God. As for the saints, the godly people who are in the land, the godly people in Ghana, they are the majestic. They are the noble ones. They are the excellent ones in whom is my delight. Those are the people I give fans. Those are the people who are great and important to me. The godly people. The pastors, the men of God, the believers, I like, I like those people. They are the ones who are my delight. They are the ones who are great to me. But I, I'm just saying, as a Christian, you, you, there's, there's, um, there is a feeling you must have for your pastor. That's what I believe. The man of God that God sends to you. 
you must have a feeling. You must find it to be precious. Because your dentist is precious. Your doctor is precious. Your, uh, even your girlfriend in level 200. What she was doing to you, you valued, you valued her for that. Do you see? But the one who lays hands on you, the one who says lift your hand for a blessing, the one who says take your communion, the one who says no evil will come nigh your dwelling place, the one who comes to share with you what God has to say to you, if you are spiritual, if there's any value of anything holy or anything wonderful in God, you value that person also. So I'm telling you, you will never come to know God unless you start to you start to recognize, I think it's the first step, that this person was sent to me to help me to know him. The Holy Spirit sent this person to me. Very good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. John 12, 20. The Bible says certain Greeks came to Philip. They came to who? They came to worship at the feast. Sorry. Verse 12. Then the same came to Philip. Are you there? You've gone home. Which was of Bethsaida of Galilee and desired him saying, Sir, we would see who? Did they come to see Philip? No. But if you want to see Jesus, eh, you have to deal with Philip. I tell you, you have to set an appointment with Philip if you want to see Jesus. There's no around. When God wants to pull you close, ah, Hosea 11 verse 4. Hosea 11 verse 4. When God wants to pull you close to him, I hope it's right. Yes, I've drawn them with the cords. The rope that God uses to pull you to him is a man. Yeah, look at it. I drew them with cords of a man. Use a man to draw. And it's true. It's true. It's, by, it's in the Bible. I drew them. I was pulling them. A cord is a rope, my friends. I drew them. A cord. For those of you who want to protect, a cord is another word for rope. Or a, Don't worry, don't worry. We catch up eventually. It's okay. More of science and math. Grammar and vocabulary is, di is different. It's okay. I pull and present. Thank God you could have been Pope Jones. So you pull them. God pulls us with the cord. That's it. I mean, you know, when Prophet was preaching on, on sacrifice, was it last Sunday? Yes, it was last Sunday. I felt that. What, what else is there for me to give God? That's what I felt. What else? What, is, what can I do again? What else is a sacrifice? When, how many of you have been in a service and you wanted to best? Have you, have you had that feeling for, that you want, yeah, that, that thing, that's God. But how did God make you like him? How did God make you even think he's something nice and attractive? How did God draw you? By the way, it's a supernatural desire to desire God. Because God is not beautiful. Well, Jesus was not beautiful. According to Isaiah 53 verse 2. When we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So it's not a normal desire to desire Jesus. Or I will like God or... No, 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 no. On Friday I was telling them that. There are some desires that show that something in you has changed. Yes, like, like a desire to be in church. It's a very strange thing. Your roommates you left in school, when you told them that, hey, if you, come, you, if you don't come, you'll miss, you miss the preaching today. They say, oh, that's fine. I'm okay, you can go. They don't feel bad. It's you that feel sad that you were sacked from a job they are not paying you to do. They've sacked you from the film stars. Now you are crying. It's because there's a new man in you that has certain desires. Yes. So when God wants you to like him, yes, I, mean, I tell you, prophet has preached for me to cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prophet has preached. I, I, I remember, I don't want to say the name of the message because it's too precious. I remember watching him. I said, my God. I, I, you see, those feelings for God, it's a man who will make you have those feelings. Oh, it's a man, those of you who are in the ministry, it's a man who made you feel that like it's good to be a pastor. It's a man. I drew him with the courts of men. So I pray that God himself will help you to recognize who he has sent to you and to see the gift that God has given to you. Amen. Now, I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing. Oh, no, no, no. We, are, we, are, we have things to do, you people. So now, I, want to sh I just want to show you in the Bible how the Holy Spirit sends people, if you are interested. Are you still interested or you are? Okay. 
how the Holy Spirit sends people to your life to help you to know him. Amen. Now let's look at some examples. Number one, Acts chapter 8, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake to Philip, saying, Arise. Now, for context, in verse, in, in, uh, from the beginning of the chapter, Acts 8, 1, 2, 3, it says, Philip went down into Samaria and preached Christ. So Philip had a big evangelistic campaign. And there were miracles and an outbreak of God's power and salvations, and it was fantastic. Then, as he finished uh, having the crusade, in verse 26, the Holy Spirit, who, who, who spoke to him? Look at it. The angel of the Lord, or that word angel means the messenger of the Lord, okay, said to Philip, arise and start walking towards the south, to the way that goes down from Jerusalem and to Gaza, which is desert. It's a desert land. Verse 27. And so Philip arose, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, and a Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of her treasure, had come to Jerusalem for to worship. So there was an Ethiopian man who wanted to know God. And God wanted the Ethiopian man to, to also know him. Now the Holy Spirit went to speak to Philip instead of speaking to the Ethiopian. You would have thought that the Holy Spirit would appear to the Ethiopian and say, hey, I just want to explain to you what is going on. But the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and join yourself to this child. I tell you, who you join to in this life is from the Holy Spirit. So the, the Ethiopian man was sitting in the chariot reading. Now the Bible says he was reading from the, the prophet Isaiah. He was reading Isaiah 53. So then Philip went and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? Now the answer is profound. How can I understand except some spirit? Oh, I said, except some, 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 some wind, except some oil. I cannot understand except some man, some man should guide me. You will, hey, this book, this book, I'm telling you, this one, you will never understand unless some man, some man, some man should guide me to understand this. I tell you, that's all that the Macarius is a guide to this. The Macarius is a guide to this. So I'm preaching. I'm preaching one point from one chapter today. One point that I've, that I've, that I've been made to understand. I didn't know. That I've been made to understand. That's what it means to have a pastor. How will I understand? So the Ethiopian was there reading Isaiah 53. And the Holy Spirit saw that. I mean, somebody who is reading the Bible... It is for those of you who say, I read my Bible at home. The Ethiopian was reading his Bible, and the Holy Spirit knew that it's not enough. So, it's, I'm reading the Bible. Explain to me how. So, the Holy Spirit tells Philip, I, if I was the Holy Spirit, I will just say, Enoch of Ethiopia, I can see that. Enoch, Enoch of Ethiopia, Okuma, I've seen. Bishop Paul, be careful. I've seen that you want to know me and that you are reading Isaiah 53. I will now like to teach to you what Isaiah 53 is saying and to lead you to give your life to Christ and to help you to know me. I said, no, Philip, Philip, you go and join yourself to this chariot. <laughs> Philip, you go. I think, I think that's serious. Then, look at this. The eunuch desired Philip. Look at the scripture. He, he desired that Philip should come and sit with him. Some of you, you don't want to hear anything your prophet has to say. You have no desire for the word of God, no desire to be in church, no desire to attend any service. You come for the last 45 minutes every Sunday, and that's why you will never know God, because you don't recognize that this man has been sent to me. Look, let me tell you the truth. Even if you never meet him, or you never have a chance to talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, which you should because you are in his church, but even if you don't, you have to just recognize God is about to speak to me. God is about to speak to me. 
every time you hear him preaching, God's about to speak to me. Every time you listen to yourself, God's about to guide me. Because I can never understand, except some man, a, a man, a, a human being somewhere has to step in. That's Acts chapter 8. I'm almost done. That's Acts chapter 8. Are you with me? Now, let's look at Acts chapter 9, the very next chapter. Let's look at Acts chapter 9. Now, this, this is about Paul. By the way, you need to know who Paul is. Paul is not like Peter or James. No, these are fishermen who picked up the Bible later. Paul, uh, Philippians chapter 3 verse 5. Philippians chapter 3 verse 5. I want to give you a background. Can I give you a short background? Uh, my dear, if you can give me the good news translation, it would be very helpful. So that we all understand. I was circumcised when I was a week old. Hmm. <laughs> I am an Israelite by birth. I was talking about his pedigree. I was saying, I grew up in the church from birth. Then he said, I am from the tribe of Benjamin. No half co. He wasn't half Benjamin, half whatever. Pure blood. He wasn't a Samaritan. He wasn't a mixed breed. I'm a pure Benjamin. There were, there were 12 tribes from Jacob, and one of them was Benjamin. So I'm a pure blooded Hebrew. Now, as far as keeping the Jewish law is concerned, I was a Pharisee. You see, that, that, what they're trying to say is that you are still trying to obey. I'm teaching it. Wow. Or as one great man of God said, I'm blameless and up to teach. I can teach. Uh -huh. one, one pastor was asked that, I mean, what do you think of yourself? And he said, oh, I'm blameless. Just like the scripture asks us to be. And then number two, I'm up to teach. And then number three, I'm a husband of one wife. They said, and if there are any other requirements, I don't know of them, but the ones I know, I fulfilled all of them. Wow. These are Pauline feelings. Pauline in nature. As far as the law is concerned, I'm a pastor. A Pharisee is a leader in the church. Wow. Verse 6. Are you there going home? Now, I was so zealous that I persecuted the church. Now, as far as a person can be righteous, Kola Diva Zamonandes, as far as a person can possibly be righteous, pornography, what is that? Masturbation. Master who? Fornication. Fun, fun what? As far as it's... Now, some of you here, I mean, that, that, that's why you can't even shout in the church. You are pretending like you are writing notes. As far as the law... Well, if you were writing this book, you would say that as much as the law can be broken, as far as it can be broken. It's as far as... How far can the law go? Paul says, I was without fault. I was without fault. Now, I want you to see something. I want you to see something. Now, in Acts chapter 9, that is Paul. I'm, I'm, in fact, can you, look, let's go back, let's go back. Can you show me verse 7? Before we, before we go on, I'm sorry to take us off. But now, okay, no, no. Back to, back to verse, verse 6, sorry. Now, he says that as far as, verse 6, as far as trying to obey the commands of the law. So, what he was saying was that. Now, by the way, let me, let me, let me be honest with you. Ma Matthew to Revelation is easier. Than Genesis to Malachi. Genesis to Malachi, first of all, we have the top ten, which we call the Ten Commandments. After that, we have the 700 laws of Moses. Before we have the Psalms. Now, the Psalms go deeper. You see, so Moses said, don't do this, don't do this. Then the Psalms said, the meditations of my heart, the <laughs> search me if there's any wicked way. There's a within things. So he said, so what Paul said, as far as I know, as far as I know, eternal, eternal. As for me, I'm... I'm I'm without fault. I, I, I think it deserves respect. Now, he's blameless. Acts 9 verse 3. Acts 9 verse 3. Take me back to King James if you can. Now, this is the same Paul. He journeyed and came near to Damascus. Suddenly, there was a light. Your sustain is on. It's disturbing me. Don't worry. There was a light that shined round about him from heaven. Then, verse 4, he fell to the earth and he heard a voice. So, so, you are disturbing me. Now, Saul's response was shocking because this is somebody who is trying to obey God. 
be following the law, he knows everything. He's a Pharisee without a fault. So, but he, his response is, who are who? Who that? Who are you? I submit to you, first love church, that you can know all of this. You can read and try to obey and even be a Pharisee of it. And when you come face to face with the person you think you studied and you've pursued, you find out that you don't even know the person at all. So the Paul of many scriptures said, actually, I don't know this person. I don't know who. I don't know who this is. Then God says, my name is Jesus. The God that you say you've been following. I've been there from the beginning. I, I am the word. The word you say you know, I am the word. I am Jesus. Now, if you jump to verse 10, you see beautifully. What is, no, no, sorry. Let's stay there. Acts chapter 9, verse 5. I'm sorry. Then what is the solution? He says, Lord. Now, this is where it confuses me. Lord. What would you have me to do? By the way, just side note. These are the two questions for every Christian. Number one, who are you, God? To, to know God, who he is. Number two, what, what would you have me to do? Is there something that you want me to do? These are the two questions that you should ask. Now, Paul was trembling and astonished. You'll be surprised. He was shocked. He said, what would you have me to do? Now, if I was God, I, I, this is not what I would do. Look at what God said. Arise and go into the city, and it will be told thee what you must do. God, hold on. You are already talking to me. It's not even like we have to postpone the meeting. I'm here. I'm asking you, what will you have me do? So if you can please give me the list right now. You're already, I can hear you, you can hear me. You've introduced yourself. I am so, you already know my name. You've introduced yourself as Jesus. Right now I say, okay, I agree. What will you have me to do? The Holy Spirit says, no, I don't want to speak to you directly. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not, you are not yet ready, you are not yet mature to hear my voice. So go to the city and find some man. So in verse 10, we find out who that man is. And that man is Ananias. And a disciple will tell you about me. Because you don't know me. Who are you, Lord? Go and ask Ananias. How can I know you, God? Ask Ananias. How can I understand your word? Ask Ananias. How can I know who you are? Ask, go and find the disciple. Holy Spirit led men of God. So the Lord appeared to Ananias. He too, I don't understand. God seems to be able to talk to people. That he will talk to this man and talk to this man to make them meet. Why don't you have two separate meetings? Economy of time. We were in Acts 8 or we are now in Acts 9. It's still happening. Tell me. I'll ask for you. When you meet God, you say, God, I cannot go to uh, Damascus. Whatever you have to say, you better say it now and say it to me. I've taken my notes. I've, I've taken my time. You are here now. I cannot deal with Ananias. Ananias is too melancholic. I don't like the way Ananias talks. I can't stand Ananias. Uh, for me, I don't, it's, not, it's not my type. You get somebody else. Is James or John available? I, I, cannot, I cannot go to Ananias. Now God spoke to Ananias. He didn't speak to anybody else. He didn't even ask Peter. He spoke to Ananias. And Ananias also said, Behold, I'm here, Lord. Verse 11. Then he said, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he's praying as you speak now. And Ananias went and laid hands on him. And that was when Paul started to know the God he thought he had been serving. Will God send you a man, yes or no? Now that was Acts 9. We've done Acts 8, we've done Acts 9. Now let's do Acts 10. To prove, to prove that it's true. So that we don't have any arguments. What do you think? What do you think about that? Okay. Let's start again. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. This is the most confusing one. Now, Cornelius is a centurion of the band called the Italian band. He used, no, he didn't used to play in a band, Paul. He was in a band of soldiers that came from Italy. Uh, it's, what school is that? Ah, Presec. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry, sorry. A devout man and one that feared God with, with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. This is a good man. A good man. Verse 3. He saw in a vision 
evidently about the ninth hour of the day, again, a messenger of God coming in to him and saying to him, Cornelius, now this is where I say, the angel of God who came. Why didn't he just preach? Finish up. You, you are here. I'm hearing you. You are hearing me. We're all here. There's nothing else to say. How long will it take? Uh, and whatever Peter is going to say, can you not say it to me? He said, when he looked at him, he was afraid. And he said, what is it, Lord? And he said to him, your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. Verse 5. And now, yeah, this is the one that even freaks me out. Send men to Joppa. I like, can't find somebody in the area. Like you couldn't find another man of God. Those of you who say, I'll go to a church near me. Oh, man. I'm going to, since I moved to Dansoman, I have to find a church in Dansoman. Your man of God is only in Joppa. There is no way, I'm telling you, you can try many other, only I don't want to, I don't want to embarrass him. My friend is here. He is the, he, he left the church. After some time, he came, me and I knew he was on holiday. One day I texted him, Charlie, I've missed you. When you're ready, come back. He now, he went around all the different churches. You go around, uh, you find out that. Hey, it's, like, it's like when you're in love with a girl, you, go, you say that you're breaking up because something, something. You go around, uh, you see that. You come back. Maybe the same girl, no, Charlie. Same girl, no. Yeah, or oh, Reverend Nathan, what do you think? Good preaching. <laughs> Your man of God is in Joppa. Your man of God is in East Legon. Your man of God is in Mimpersem. Your man of God, your, the person God has sent into your life. Ah! I know that your brother's man of God is Prophet Abrebese, and God bless them. But that's your brother. As for you, when you go, you don't even understand. You say you are going back to your Methodist. Is he not going to sleep in the afternoon? You have been going there for siesta. There are some people when they go to the Methodist church, they are completely blessed and filled because that's their man of God. But as for you, you better get some men and send them to Joppa. And call, you know, I thought this was Ghanaian English, but apparently it's real English. Call for one Simon. <laughs> I'm looking for one Kwame. <laughs> call for one, one Simon. Whose surname is Peter? Specific. Because there's Simon Barjona, there's Simon the Sorcerer, the, the specific. There, there, there's even John Dark somewhere here. Let's be serious. There's, there are a few Darks here and there. Please. There's a, spe <laughs> there's a specific. There's a specific. Eh. You know, I was telling Daddy, I, I don't want to sound funny. I was telling Daddy that Charlie, there's somebody that Daddy listens to all the time. He's telling him, every time I tried to tell him for years, he doesn't want to receive it. He said that, a guy I don't understand. But he has two people like that. One is somebody who writes books, one is somebody who preaches. I can listen, I'm in tears here, I don't understand. I don't understand, I don't understand. Like I get general points that the person is making, but I, I, I don't understand. And I'm also not spiritually excited. It's wonderful. But he, when he's listening to it, I mean, he's, he's so electrified. I mean, Charlie, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, Charlie. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I have to go to Joppa. Yes? Where it works. Now, watch this. This is confusing to me because the angel could have told Cornelius everything he has to say. Are you watching? Now, in the next verse, the Bible says, and now he's giving more details. He, he stays with another Simon Etana. So you have to clarify this <laughs> before, you, before you go and bring a tanner. Do you understand? Yes. The fact that there are many pastors in the church doesn't mean that we are all pastors. You need to know the particular Simon that you are being sent to. So I'm telling you, we are all apprentices. The pastor of this church is Bishop Daggio Mills. I'm telling you, in case I've not told you before, I'm telling you. You have to know. You have to know. You have to know. If you don't like that, go to a church where the pastor is somebody else. You go to Joppa, wherever your Joppa is, go there. But here, that's the pastor that God has given us. Are you with me or have you gone home? Then the Bible says in verse 19, jump to verse 19. In fact, maybe from verse 17, if you can. Now the scripture says, Peter had a vision. He was doubting in himself what this vision he has seen should mean. 
And behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made an inquiry for Simon's house and were at the gate. They had asked, where does Simon the Tanner live? Where does Simon the Tanner live? Where does Simon? See, in those days, there was no Google Maps, so that's how they gave directions. But in Ghana, even today, that's still how we give directions. It's a blessing. So, where is Simon's house? Oh, behind the blue kiosk, when you go 10 left, there's a big gutter. Jump it. Then when you turn right, you ask for one AJ. AJ will show you where Sewa lives. That's it. And when you follow it, you see that you'll get there. It's called Ghana Maps. Now, in verse 18, the Bible says, And he called and asked whether Simon, which was sent in Peter, was staying there. Do you understand? So they are at the gate downstairs. Please, does Simon Peter live here? Then in verse 19, the Bible says, Peter was now upstairs. He was, had had a vision. He didn't know about anyone who was downstairs. Then the Spirit came to speak to Peter. You see, you think God has only spoken to you about prophet, but God has also spoken to prophet about you. So the Holy Spirit went to see Peter, put it up, and said, put it up, put it up, and said, three men are looking for you downstairs. Tell you, this is wild, though. And all this is the work of the Holy Spirit to make Cornelius know the Holy Spirit. It's fantastic. Now, verse 20. Arise, therefore, go downstairs and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. So Peter went down to the men who were from Cornelius and said, Behold, I'm who you are looking for. What is the cause wherefore you are come? Then they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feared the Lord, and of good report among the nation of the Jews, was warned by God, by a holy angel, to send for thee into his house. To do what? To hear words of thee. To hear words. Oh God, your pastor didn't come to give you money. He didn't come to help you to get a beloved. If he does, it's by the side. He didn't come to help your education. He came so that there are some words that God has to speak to you that only Peter can say. Now this is confusing to me. Because if it was, he was bringing a Cornelius a car, then I understand. Because the Holy Spirit can't drive a car. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the Holy Spirit cannot drive a car. Or oh, Fisher Paul. I don't know how. He will need to use somebody to drive a car. I don't think so. So if they said, I understand why he called Peter. But if all you called Peter was to hear words, then you should have said the words when you met me early. I don't know if you are with me. Yes. So Peter went to go and preach. And what happened? Acts chapter 10 verse 44. It says, those words that they were hearing. As Peter yet spake these same words. What happened? The Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the word. How will I know the Holy Spirit? Pastor, show me how old he will send you a man, the man who write a book, the man who preach a message, the man who lay hands on you, the man who talk to you, the man who guide you. God will send you his friends. God will send you his friends to bring you to him. Holy Spirit led men of God. They will, they will bring you to know God. They will bring you to know God. God is not easy to find. God is difficult to find. God is difficult to find. Without a man, you are hopeless. God will always, you think of any, any great man of God you know, there's a man behind. You know, Billy Graham, I always wanted to know. When I was reading his book, that's what I was looking for, that who, because he's a Baptist. They didn't speak in tongues. When you even read his book, he mentions Great men, said, oh, the great, the, the gifted teacher. Then you mentioned the Archbishop of Canterbury in England. Or the Methodist minister in Spain who conducted great meetings. A great teacher of the world. Like, he doesn't know our people. The only person in the whole book that you know is Oral Roberts, mentioned once. He doesn't, he's not, it's not your people. So I thought that, ah, that maybe these people, there's no transfer of the anointing. There's those type of things. Then I, I, I saw a small passage in his autobiography when he talks about his ordination. He said, I can still, he said, I knelt down as the, the honored ministers in the area came to lay their hands on me. He said, I can still feel their knuckles on my head, on my blonde hair as the sun was shining on my head. And they welcomed me into their honorable fellowship. Hey, there's nobody who hasn't had, and he said, I read all the sermons of Billy Sunday. Hey, there's nobody, mention, nobody who has come to know God without a man being involved. Benny Hinn, Catherine Coleman. 
you know, there are some things he says about Captain Coleman. In fact, I mean, there are some things he knows about Catherine Coleman. There are some things, not that he knows, but there were some things that he learned from Catherine Coleman from some, let me say, things which, things. Yeah, things. And I remember he told me, I cannot, I will never say this publicly. He said, I can't say this because she, without her, I will not know God. He said, she gave me the most precious gift to have my relationship with the Holy Spirit. So I cannot say, it's not even a, such a bad thing, but it's, it's just he wouldn't like to use that example with regard to her. Yes. And he goes to a grave almost every year, goes to a grave to honor the person who helped me to know God. Every year. Every year. Every year. If you ever get to know God, you really value the person who held your hand and said, this is God. That's what the Bible calls the ministry of reconciliation. You reconcile God and men. God, this is John. John, this is God. Man, you, you help them to me. That's who our prophet has been to this church. First love church, this is God. God, this is your church. That's what it has been. And it's what God says. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My dear, living Bible, living Bible. Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 7, verse 7, verse 7. Tell me, O one I love. Now this is somebody searching for God, a lover of God, want to find God. Where are you leading your flock today? Where will you be in the afternoon? For I want to come and join you there, instead of wandering around like a vagabond among the flocks of your companions. And this is the king's response. This is God's response to you. You want to know where I am? You want to find me? If you don't know, oh, most beautiful woman, see, we are the bride of Christ. In all the world, follow the trail of my flock. The trail is the footsteps of my flock to the shepherd's tents and there feed your sheep and their lambs. If you want to find me, follow the trail of those who are already following me. You see, there's a lot of people who are already, they've already found God. They've even written books about it. Oh, I want to understand the Holy Spirit. You have sweet influence of the Holy Spirit. You have the anointed and his anointing. You have uh, steps to the anointing. You have steps to the presence of God. You have flow in the anointing. You have the anointing and the presence. You have followed the footsteps of somebody who has followed God for 35 years. And you'll find where I am. That's what the Lord says. You'll find where I am. So I pray for you that as we celebrate Prophet's birthday, it's more than just a happy moment. It's a time to recognize the one who has helped you to know God. You know what I'm preaching? I'm preaching one point. I wish I, wish I, I could tell you that the revelation is my, my revelation, but it's not. I'm preaching one point in one chapter of one book. I wish I could tell you that it's my, it's my revelation, but I, I learned it from that book, that when God wants you to know him, you see, your relationship, your relationship with God is stunted because you didn't recognize who God has sent to you. Or you didn't recognize even the container that God used to send you to. They were carrying you to Jesus. They said, put me down. I don't like the way you, you run. When you're running, the bed was shaking. Put me down. You will never make it to where God is. So I pray for you as we celebrate the prophet's birthday and we honor him. We honor him. We honor what God has used him to do. We honor the anointing and the grace of God on his life. But most of all, we honor the fact that I wouldn't have known how to have my... How many of you wouldn't have known how to have your quiet time? Let's start from the basic. How many of you didn't know that man is a spirit? He has a soul and lives in a body. You didn't know. Yes. How many of you didn't know that... Uh, the spirit of an unsaved man is dead and desperately wicked. You didn't know. How many of you didn't know that the spirit of a saved man is righteous and truly holy? You didn't know. How many of you knew physical steps to overcoming fornication? Even now, you still don't know. You didn't know. You didn't know. How many of you knew how to pray? How many of you came to understand tongues in this church, like speak, what it means to speak in tongues? How many of you? That's it. Now you see yourself in your room. How did you learn how to speak in tongues? 
God will send you a man. So, I'm just leaving that with you. Be careful. Be careful about your relationships with spiritual people. Be careful. The presence of God. Ah, I'll read this verse in the end. I promise, I promise. I'm closing. Luke 13, Luke 13, 34. I'm closing. My time is even up. Luke 13. Oh, Jerusalem. Now, whenever you see Jerusalem, the New Testament, it's talking about the church. Because remember, it says, uh, we are come unto Zion, the, the new Jerusalem, the church of the living God. So Jerusalem is talking about the church. The old church, church, you kill your prophets. This is also true for countries. There are some countries that slowly, they don't like men of God. They, they, they ridicule and make, look at this one. You stone, you stone those who are sent to you. Then now this, by the way, if you are reading a Bible, this will be in red letters because this is Jesus. And he says, how often I would have gathered your children together. I would have brought you under my wings. As a hen gathers her brood under her wings. But you would not. Now, this is Jesus speaking. Not, not the, the prophet you stoned. This is Jesus. I would have gathered you, but you stoned the person I sent to you. Then he says in verse 35. Now look at you. Your house, and I tell you, when you have time, look at countries which criticize men of God a lot. Which Ghana is becoming more and more. You see desolate churches, empty ministries, everything. They have a problem with the pastor. They like criticizing men of God. You start to see empty churches, desolate. He says, your house will be left desolate. Now this is the worst part. And verily I say unto you, this is Jesus. You shall see Jesus no more. You will not see me. You will not get me. The presence of God walks out of your life. I'm telling you. Until the time comes when we first love church, when we say that the one who is coming in the name of the Lord is a blessing. It's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Sorry. It's a blessing. It's not an evil thing. It's a blessing. The one who is coming in the name of God is a blessing. He's a blessed person. We want him to come. You shall see me no more. Don't expect, don't expect the presence of Jesus when you reject his, his messengers. That's why I said, the one who receives you has received me. If you can receive it. Jesus said, hey, he told his disciples, when you go and preach, whoever receives you, they've actually received me. So be careful. I'm just, I'm just telling you, be careful. I, 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 I have never met anybody who has criticized God's servants and done well. And, and why? Because when God's servants are not doing what God wants them to do. He has his way of dealing with it, and God is wilder than you. He doesn't need your help. He doesn't need your help at all. Like me and my brother, when we were in primary school, sometimes we'll be having an argument that we've brought from home. Then a third party will try to join. Then the both of us will pause our issue, and we'll deal sometimes physically with the person who has come to intervene with. So when God and his servants are dealing with their issues, I advise you, no matter what I advise you, it's what I, it's what, at least it's what I believe. Let's leave it to God. Amen. And let God deal with it. Wild, unless you think God is not just. Unless you're accusing God that he has bad leadership. And you have a better way of doing things. Be careful. Be careful. So today we are celebrating Founders Day as we close. And we are celebrating the Holy Spirit-led man of God that has been sent into our lives. Please stand to your feet with me. Please. God bless you. Some of you just came. I don't know why you're shouting. Oh. Holy, holy. Lord, you are worthy. And I'm honored to sing your praise. King of glory. God of Hallowed be your name. Let's sing it again. Holy, holy, Lord, you are worthy. Holy, holy, Lord, you are worthy. And I'm honored to sing your name. King of
of glory. King of glory. God of might. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Come on, lift your hands and sing. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. servant you have given to us. We respect what you have done. We honor it. Today we thank you for his life, his ministry, what you have used him to do, what you have helped him to survive and to thrive in. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for sending us somebody. You sent your best man. And today as we celebrate his birthday, we celebrate Founders Day, we recognize your grace and your kindness by sending us to him. We recognize that you have drawn us with the cords of a man. You recognize that you have used an earthen vessel to bring us to you, to love you and to know you, to experience you. And so we are standing here because of your mercy and your kindness. Give him long life, Lord. Show kindness to him and to his. Let him see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Let him be satisfied with long life. Help us to have a heart and an eye to see and to know how to deal with your servant, the one that you have chosen. We honor you, Lord. We honor him and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please close your eyes with me one more time. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord, your personal Savior, you want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I don't know God. I came to church, but if I die today, I don't know if I'm going to heaven or I'm going to hell. Please pray for me. I want to give my heart to Jesus Christ. If you're here like that, please lift up your right hand high above your head. High above your head. Pastor, pray for me. I came to church, I, I heard your preaching, but if I die on my way home, I'm not sure if I've ever given my life to God, and I want you to pray for me before I go home. Lift up your right hand high above your head, high above your head. I need Jesus. Now, if you've lifted up your right hand, do one more thing for me. Take your Bible, take your bag, whatever you came with, your phone, and come to the front. I want to pray for you. Just walk all the way from your seat right here to the front. I want to pray for you. Come. No matter where you're sitting, no matter how far you are, just come all the way to the front. You lifted up your hand. I want you to come to me. Hallowed be your name. I'm waiting for you if you're coming. If there's anyone I'm waiting for you. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Pastor, I need Jesus. Pray for me before I go home. I don't want to risk going home without giving my heart to Jesus Christ. Come, I want to pray with you. Come, there are people coming. You can join them. I'm waiting for you. Come all the way. Divine authority. Divine authority. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Come on, church. One last time as we wait for them. Hallowed be your name. 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 Bow your heads in front, church. Bow your heads as well. Let's all pray. Everybody in this room, pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today 
just as I am. I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. Write my name in the book of life. Come into my heart. Be the master of my life. I say, Jesus, from today, I'm born again. I have a new life. I will serve you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please put your hands together for our wonderful brothers and sisters. Hey, thanks for watching the First Love YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this message, take a minute to hit the subscribe button on your screen. And this way, you won't miss a single message. Thanks again for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.